1895 was a year a man named Henry purchased 35 acres of land southwest of today's downtown LA. He believed the ranchos would give way to sprawling commercial centers. Henry was contacted by the city fathers who sought to build a road that would ultimately bisect his property. He agreed with two conditions. First, the street would have to be 120 feet wide for the rush of traffic he forecasted would use the boulevard. Second, the street would have to bear his name, Henry Gaylord Wilshire. By the late 1920s, Wilshire Boulevard was a mecca for art, fashion, and commerce. By the year 2000, the boulevard ran from the heart of downtown to the shores of the Pacific in what is LA's ultimate love note to the car culture. Signal Fan's Museum of Traffic Control was based in this unassuming Fullerton, California residence. It was also the place he called home. So how many signal signs and controllers are in the Museum of Traffic Control? I have presently 92 signals. I have 53 traffic controllers, including controllers and cabinets, and I have over 600 signs at present. Builders between the 30s and 50s felt their structures should have a sense of style like no other, and so did the designers of the infrastructure. This is the Cross Hines. Um, the collectors call them Art Deco, even though they really weren't referred to as such because of these um, ornamental fins on the tops and the bottoms. This is actually the type DT, which st stands for dust tight. Uh, it was the second version of these in which the reflector um, met the gasket and created a, a dust tight seal. The older D version didn't have that, so dust could get into the reflector and, and make it dirty. But this was their revolutionary uh, style signal at the time in the 1950s. Now, is the Krauss Heinz, are they still building Krauss Heinz? Krauss Heinz is no longer in uh, business. They sold their uh, business to TCT. And I think they still have a lot of the original molds, but some of the ones for these signals have long gone, so these signals are fairly rare. Okay, okay. and this one, and again, these were more common in the Midwest and probably the East than they ever were here. Even, yes. though, even though you did mention that, yeah. a couple of spots here, Whittier has some of them. Santa Barbara used to have a bunch of them. But oh. I think it was all depending on the city and um, yeah. you know what particular intersection we're talking about. As signals controlled more traffic, technology was developed to control them. The first actuated signal designs proved interesting and potentially hazardous to one's sanity. The uh, first actuated signals were actually horn actuated, which meant the driver pulled up to the intersection and honked their horn, and that would uh, be like a micro. There was a, a box with a microphone, and that would activate the relay to change the signal. Um, I don't think it gained very much widespread popularity, obviously because of the noise problem. But uh, it is interesting to know that the first actuated signals were horn or sound actuated. Um, but I don't know <laughs> who the person was thinking, you know, what they were thinking when they created those. But uh, it, it, as far as I know, it didn't gain any widespread use. Despite its appearance, we're proud to say that this signal is not horn actuated. We're sure this eases the minds of many weary Angelinos viewing this film. Signal Fan demonstrates a more familiar form of actuated traffic control. The clicking sound you hear behind me here is from an electromechanical controller. This is the Econolite Type F controller. Uh, these were used all over Southern California. They were the most common controller used. Um, the clicking is the uh, cam advancing the, uh, or the drum advancing the cam one position, which would change the lights. So each click you hear is a light changing. Um, these were used from the 50s all the way through the 70s, even into the early 80s, actually. This one? Does this, this controls control? the cross signs with the command lenses. Okay. Uh, it's basically here. Uh, there is a, let's see if I can open this up. This has the dial in it. My thumb screw going here. See the, the rotating dial, and each time it hits the contact, it advances the cam one position. 
it's about to do right there. And this one, you undo the back piece. You can do here. And you can see the spinning disc use a different form of technology where the disc rotates and spins. It also has, incorporates its flasher with the spinning action. As the dial hits the contact, it'll move this cam row one position. And uh, the contacts for the signal lamps are right lined up along there. Now, is this a technology that was fraught with a lot of breakdowns and everything like that? Yeah, mostly in the wintertime when things get cold and sticky and all that. That's uh, a lot of times signals would get stuck in, in a position. And so the guy would have to come out and unstick them. People would be sitting at a red light overly long or a yellow light that just sits there in yellow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, ultimately why electronics took over because they were more reliable in, in the harsh environments. And easy to maintain. And easy course. to maintain, yeah. So like on this, on this Eagle electromechanical, they uh, employed a, a light bulb down here at the bottom that was normally lit all winter long and kept the cabinet warm so it wouldn't freeze up because a lot of the electromechanical controllers using moving parts could freeze up in the winter if they weren't kept to a, a certain temperature so a lot of times they'd uh, I have a smaller wattage bulb in there now but they'd use just a standard traffic signal bulb in there and it would keep the cabinet warm and uh, keep the parts from freezing okay. this was a pole mounted unit it's a little different than a typical electromechanical and the dials were vertically mounted instead of horizontally mounted and uh, it has a little bit of a, a different design in that it, there's a little motor running with a disc that advances the, the lights versus the ratchet motor that you hear with the Econolite. Mm -hmm. The clicks. Yeah, instead of the clicks, this one's more of a whirring sound. Controllers were designed to regulate vehicular traffic and would also be given the task of protecting pedestrians crossing streets and throughways. Uh, the first pedestrian traffic signals came to be after World War II, um, mostly again in the larger cities. Uh, the pedestrian volumes were so high that they created their own phase for a lot of these pedestrians. Phase, by phase I mean that they would have a sequence in the signal system where the, the traffic would be all red, so everybody would stop, and then the pedestrians would get their own walk signal. So the original pedestrian signals were part of the traffic signal, only just an added section at the bottom that had a walk display. So by pedestrians looking at the light, they would see the light would go red for the cars and then they would get a walk and they could basically move from whatever corner they wanted to to whatever corner. Uh, but later, um, they, the signals began to be separated out and then um, pedestrians had their own signals to follow. Another innovation was the pedestrian push button, which when pushed, told the controller that one or more pedestrians were present and alter the signal's phase cycles accordingly. First push buttons, I believe, were in the 30s to early 40s. Um, basically, the, before pedestrian signals were used, uh, the push button was there to uh, so that pedestrian could call a regular vehicle signal if they were trying to cross the street. If there were no vehicles around uh, on the cross street, they could at least uh, actuate the signal and be able to cross on the green light. So I believe the push button is a lot older than the actual pedestrian signal. It's important to note the system of actuated traffic control needed no human oversight and put citizens on an honor system. In the 100 plus years the system has been in place, it has proven to be one of civilization's great successes.